Rest in peace, Wesley Shepard. You're living in this house for free. Cooking meth in here? Like, do you realize? <laughs> Her mind is like, he has a secret. What is the secret? What is the secret? You should have took him to laser tag or something, bro. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> Your ex-girlfriend is Walter. <laughs> You're Skyler. You're Skyler. He <laughs> thought we were joking. He thought this was a wake-up call. I got your wake-up call, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Life, Death, and Dope Boys, welcome to the show. I am Indy. I'm joined by Justin. Hello. Please, please be prepared for spoilers. For the entirety of Breaking Bad, we're talking about that whole thing. Mm -hmm. Walt dies. <laughs> Walt <laughs> dies at the end. <laughs> we just watched uh, Down. It's season, it's episode four of season two. It's got to be the most depressing episode of Breaking Bad so far. It's only sad. if you're Jesse. Only if you're a fan of Jesse Pinkman. Who isn't? Jesse is the most likable character at this point. And I, I feel suppose. like they take that and they weaponize it. All right, well, let's go ahead and get into it. Life, Death, and Dope Boys, Episode 11, You Ain't Got No Alibi. This episode starts off with more teddy bear stuff, but I'm not talking about that. So, like, Jesse, dude's totally broke, and he sneaks around to meet Walt on the low at this corner store, straight up asking for, like, half the cash they made from slinging dope. Walt, though, he ain't having it. He's all like... Why should I pay for your screw-ups? But in the end, he ends up handing Jesse 600 bucks. What <laughs> screw-ups? Does Walt owe Jesse money? Walt doesn't owe Jesse money. Like, realistically, it sucks what happened. It sucks what happened. But no, Walt doesn't owe Jesse a fucking dime. Let's be real. Any money that Walter gives Jesse in it's this out episode. out of the kindness of his heart. Yeah. I feel like, like it sucks what happened, but if situations, if roles were reversed. I don't know, man. I think if roles were reversed, Jesse, Jesse would have given it. Jesse would give Walter half of his money. Yeah. I think so. I think that's why Jesse expects Walter to give him some money. because We're partners, 50-50. Like, yeah, he 50 says 50. it like five times. We're partners, bro, 50-50. Give me half of your money. He says half of your money is mine. I feel like his approach is wrong. That, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> what do you mean half of my money is yours, bro? Like, ask me for a favor. Don't be coming up talking about, I understand what happened, and it's, you know. I, yeah, Walter does not owe Jesse that money at <laughs> all. He should he should break him off some hazard pay for sure. He should break him off some hazard pay. But I feel like Jesse is coming too strong. He's not really being objective. I think he's just feeling desperate. No, not even he's not even really desperate yet because he hasn't met up with his parents yet. Yeah, he's just broke. But he's I don't know. That was definitely the wrong way to approach it. But no, it's it's Walter doesn't know him shit. They both came at this the wrong way. Yeah, but still. Walter doesn't owe Jesse any money. And they meet at this uh, corner store. And at first I'm like, why couldn't they have met somewhere more private? But neither Jesse nor Walt have a phone. <laughs> so I guess like, all right, Walter probably feels like he can't go to Jesse's house because Jesse's house is too hot. And they got to meet somewhere. Walt can't just call him and tell him a meetup spot. So he goes to the corner store and calls him from the payphone. And then Jesse comes up there because it does seem like they don't have no privacy. Like they should be somewhere in the cut. The dudes is walking all up on them. The cop walks in. Way up on them. Even if I wasn't having a secret gas station meeting, that <laughs> gentleman pushed up on him way too. That was weird. Way too aggressive. He didn't even wait. He wasn't like, oh, I'll just wait for him to move past and then I'll go and check out what's over there. No, he's like, hey, bro. <laughs> How you doing? I'm and then to... looks at Jesse like he like spoons Walter and makes direct <laughs> eye contact with Jesse. So you guys down or what? <laughs> is this what this what, is? What kind of meeting is this? <laughs> this is what I come to the gas station for. <laughs> oh my god! No. Yeah, All right, let me I grab a pack leave. of Jack Links and get out of here. <laughs> Next morning, Walt's playing Mr. Chef in the kitchen, flipping pancakes and all for Skyler and Junior. He's trying to play it cool, you know, smooth things over, because Skyler's got her suspicions. Dude's lying about a secret second cell phone, and Skyler's side-eyeing him hard because she knows it. So Walt starts spinning this tale about how Skyler might have heard his phone alarm, which is really just a reminder to pop his meds and mistook it for a call. Never volunteer a lie. No yeah. I, nobody asked. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> nobody asked for that. The scene was already awkward with the fake breakfast. Yeah, but he was gonna. It, he was smoothing it over well. <laughs> he really was. Like, like the, the fake doing? breakfast was cheesy, but his family was feeling it. Like it was like all right. Yeah, like the mood had softened. Yeah, They're like joking yeah. now about random bands that I've never heard of. Yeah, and then uh, he volunteered. What's creepy that is like bullshit. the creepy smile when he reach over, reaches over to get Skylar's plate. Like no, no, 
I got it. I got it. It's like, bro, like this is awkward. This is kind of scary. And then it turns cringe when he starts reciting the lie. Should have never said anything. He should have never even brought that up. And he really thinks that Skylar is buying it. Like yeah. he's gonna because he just rolls right back into the yeah. So if you wanna uh you know go to the the seminar or whatever he's talking about, it's like you can't just roll right over that. Especially you're not looking at her. You're not gauging her reaction. Like is she really? I think something that Walter doesn't take into account for some weird reason. Is that Hank is who told her that he has a second cell phone. Hank didn't lie. Hank didn't make a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> Hank didn't lie. Hank didn't make a mistake. If, like, if there's anybody who he should... He still hasn't talked to Hank yet. Yeah. Like, he's trying to make up this bullshit, but it's like there is nothing that anybody could tell me, bro. It's like he looked... The DEA agent, Brian remember that we have, looked up the phone records, bro. Like... You didn't get a phone call. And so he's like... <laughs> Quit okay, playing. We know What if lying. I say it's an alarm? We know you're lying. See, I was like, bro, you never, I've never heard an alarm go off on your phone ever. Yeah. For meds at this hour? That's not, no. It didn't go off yesterday at this time. The day before that. <laughs> or the next day. <laughs> yeah. It didn't go off last night. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. the phone is gone. So, because Tuco snapped it and threw it. But still, man, like, that's, that's a bad. Hey, I um, was thinking of plot holes, too. Phones like that. That wouldn't have been enough to completely destroy it. He would have had to have, like, poured some water on it or some shit. Those flippy phones like that, he would have snapped it in half at the joint like that, and it somebody still could have gotten information out of it. I think he also, like, removed the SIM card. Okay, that yeah. might have helped. I think that's what it was. He removed the SIM card and then he snapped it and threw it away. I don't know what snapping it was supposed to do. Yeah. But you could have still just plugged the bitch in and, and figured something out. Yeah. Knowing from experience, those phones, those 2008 cell phones, man. <laughs> Bricks. <laughs> Skylar's not buying Walt's long ass lie. She pulls her own Batman maneuver, dipping out the crib and leaving her phone behind on the counter while Walt's still jibber jabbering. At what point do you think Skylar left the house? Because by the time he realizes that she's gone, she's in, he's, he hears the car door shut. I think as soon as he started talking about a fucking alarm, <laughs> she was just like, all right. Like she was willing to listen when she said, when he said, I've been thinking about what we were talking about the other night with the cell phone. Yeah, like piques her interest. Like, you hmm, see her like. I've been thinking ears. about it, huh? What's he going to say? <laughs> and then he starts saying some bullshit and she's like, oh. Oh, well. no point listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> I got some smoking to do. Yeah, I'm going to go sit in my car and chief like five cigarettes. <laughs> so Jesse's folks hit him up. They're like, come through. We got the lawyer in the mix. Mm -hmm. So my man Jesse rolls up and they drop the bomb. He's got 72 hours to bounce up out of the crib. Homeboy's basically getting the boot. When his parents walk in, like when they open the door and you see it's his mom, she like looks at him and then cuts her eye immediately. She never really looks at him the whole time. She, I feel she's like, like she's, guilty. she's watching. Yeah, she feels guilty. She, I feel like she's watching Jesse's dad. Because she's like really looking at him the whole time. Jesse's dad isn't looking at Jesse unless he's talking. I think this whole thing with the eviction, the 30, the 72 hours, like you got three days to get the fuck up out of here. I feel like that's Jesse's dad's idea. I don't blame him. I think um, a lot of times in this show, things are framed. They have to be framed specially for Walter and Jesse so that you feel like their opposition is in the wrong when it's like. They're well within their right. Yeah. Like, cause yeah. think about it from what Jesse's parents' perspective. Like, a DE agent comes to your house and talks to you. So Bro. you go tell your spouse, hey, a DE agent just came looking for Jesse. You go to the house and find <laughs> and a goddamn a meth, meth lab, lab in, the in the basement. It's like, oh. We gotta get this motherfucker out of here. Now. <laughs> <laughs> now, as soon as we find him. We gotta get him gone. Oh, Jesse's Jesse mom, turned back up. Jesse's mom the, probably had to talk the dad out of calling the police himself. For real. Like, he was probably with it. Like, all right, nah. <laughs> We're calling the this. cops. Get him out of here. We've done enough for it's this. It's hard year. to blame him, bro. I, I agree with you. You can't then, so they will how how are you gonna sell the house at this point? There's a fucking meth lab in the basement. Like I think, the, that, the, the, I think the, that might have been the argument that Jesse's mom used though. The police would have sold the police would have seized the motherfucker. The police would have seized the house. That's probably what she was like, yo, we can still sell it, make some money, blah blah blah, put it in Jake's college fund, whatever. 
Gotcha. And he's like, oh, well, all right, then we'll give him a chance. But if he's not out in three days, and that's why she shows up to get him the fuck out of there. She's like, bro, look, you're going to jail. If And then they they made the lawyer the dude who would call the cops so that it's like they can't even change their mind. Vacate the house in 72 hours. Otherwise, your parents have authorized me to contact the authorities. Yeah, there's no backing out. There's no backing out. Because the lawyer doesn't give a fuck. It was just another phone call for him. Yeah, Jesse's dad is like, yo, yeah, it's, it's, we out with this. This ain't. Don't blame them. Jesse's mom tells him about Hank paying a visit. But Jesse, trying to be slick, starts weaving a story about being a big shot at the DEA. <laughs> Moms ain't falling for it, though. Neither of them do. They're like, as soon as he starts telling that <laughs> lie, bro, they're like exasperated. Like, oh. <laughs> he should he should have even finished this statement. We know already. Like, come on, bud. <laughs> Jesse. Come on. There's no need to talk. You think <laughs> we're just doing this out of malice? <laughs> because like, we felt like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we saw the lab, bro. We saw your laboratory, Dexter. I wish. I wish he had used some sort of euphemism <laughs> like that. Like a black mom would have. Yeah. We saw your laboratory, Dexter. Mom, how do you even know about that show? <laughs> Hasn't been on the air for years, Mom. <laughs> Just because of that book bag I got you in the third grade. She straight up tells him that she's already peeped the whole meth lab situation in the basement. Lawyer dude breaks it down saying Jesse's got no choice but to go and head on. And uh, I was thinking that she, I'm surprised she didn't notice the remodeling done in the upstairs bathroom. Oh my God. Right? Right. But I guess by the time they would have gone in there, he's fixed it, right? Yeah, but like when the real estate agent was trying to sell the house, there, like the you could see the uh, floors worn down from the acid dripping on the floors, and then she looked up and it was like painted over. So it wasn't like there weren't any signs of it anymore. He hadn't gotten that taken care of. There's no way. You don't know. Well, the last thing that they did before the meth deal was cooked in Jesse's basement. Mm-hmm. And then they go and make the deal with Tuco, and Tuco beats No Dose to death. Mm-hmm. And then for the next day, Jesse is paranoid, and then they get kidnapped like the day after that. So, what uh, you think from the open house to that episode, we got what? Two weeks? There's Maybe a night. tops four days. Five no, days. man. No. Less than a week. There's three days between Jesse getting kicked out and. Uh, his meeting with his parents. That's three days. There's got to be at but, least a day or two between them. There's, there's the time no, that no, Walt's but, in the hospital. No, the Jesse's parents, Jesse's mom finds the meth lab while Jesse is kidnapped. Yeah, that's fine. So for her to... How long do you think Walt's in the hospital? Three days. Walt's in the hospital for three days. Yes. Okay. But so. at, by this time, the meth lab is already found. So she's already walked through the house. So if she was going to see the shit, like there, there was no time to repair all that. You're right about that. Uh, oh my goodness. Now, switch it up to Skylar. She walks in the door and Walt's all like, yo, where you been? Her comeback? Out. Cold, right? <laughs> so Walt's trying to mend that distance, talking about maybe rejoining this cancer support group, but Skylar's reaction is just as icy. I'm not gonna lie, like, this triggered me. Like, dudes have been through this, like, icy... Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah. It's like, man... So, like, Guys who are watching this, watching Skyler do this, they're like remembering their old like relationship that's, trauma. That's really like, what it is. That's why people hate Skyler so much. It's it's not people. That's why dudes hate Skyler so much. Yeah, because they've been through. Only it. men hate Skyler. <laughs> <laughs> Women are sitting there like, mm-hmm. I don't think Skyler's that bad, but I've watched this show five times. Like she's justified. Yeah, I've been able to remove myself from the moment because but... if, if you let yourself, this will trigger you, and you'll be like, I remember when my this bullshit. <laughs> Just tell me what's wrong. <laughs> but I'm like, Walter knows what's wrong. Walter knows what's wrong. He's pretending like he's not in the right here. It's not like he... Like, it's not like Skylar's gaslighting him. Right, exactly. <laughs> he's trying to gaslight Skylar and it's not working, so he's frustrated. <laughs> That's all this is. <laughs> Come on, dudes. Like, take a look at this thing for real. Your ex-girlfriend is Walter. <laughs> You're Skyler. <laughs> You're Skyler. <laughs> Over at Jesse's crib, his mom busts in, waking him up from sleep. Homeboy scrambling to stash his drug gear like quick. He's begging for a shot at redemption. Enough. She's already peeped all that meth. Yeah, I don't know. Everybody's gotten in trouble with their mom before. I don't, like, <laughs> yeah. We've all been in that situation where you get woken up abruptly and it's your mother standing over you like. You got you hurrying up trying to hide the pony. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, shit. Oh. Like, nah, bro. She already saw She's walked things. the entire house. Bro, there are already people. There are already movers in the house. They've already racked up. Yeah. <laughs> They're on the like, second floor. <laughs> like, it's over. She's walked that whole house. She's probably seen that you've already hidden the meth lab. Like, yeah, she's seen everything. She's been through that house and around, giving them dudes instructions on what to take. I love that the agreement is that they're just putting everything in storage until Jesse gets his life back together. Right, that's not so bad. Like, the fact that he has any chance at all, is that's like some cut in contact with a motherfucker shit. Like, bro, you're living in this house for free. Cooking meth in here? Like, do you realize? <laughs> it's Jesse's mom, though, that's the one kind of running point on the situation. You want to keep giving them chances? You deal with it. Because if I go over there... <laughs> we scrap <laughs> If I see anything, he would have walked in and seen that meth. And, and just, just called like, the police. Yeah. Like Jesse's the way dad the, is over it. Yeah, the way they portray Jesse's dad is like, oh. He had, this motherfucker hasn't started packing. He thought we were joking? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he thought we were joking. He thought this was a wake up call. I got your wake up call, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse's all like, nah, this crib's mine. Talking about how he held it down when his aunt was on her deathbed because his mom dipped out on him. His mom slaps the living shit out of him and tells him all she wants is for him to turn his life around. The you did not make her lunch every day comeback. You didn't make her lunch every day. <laughs> It's like when you're trying to make a point with somebody and they start picking little tiny details out <laughs> yeah. of your argument. Yeah. You didn't do that. It's like, that's not the point. The point is, I saw you out with that bitch. You were buying her a Coke. Ain't nobody even have a Coca-Cola. <laughs> it was a Sprite. <laughs> I fed her lunch every day. No, you didn't. <laughs> Mrs. Pinkman, were you there? I think that's the whole point of what Jesse said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How would you Were know? you there? Because the way he tells it, she didn't do nothing for her. What'd you do? Huh? She's lying there, dying, and where the hell are you? Don't start with me. It's like, where's the line between Jesse's parents being dismissive and Jesse just being ridiculous? <laughs> right. Because I feel like there's a lot of both going on. Yeah, I agree. And that's why there can't be like a, a reconciliation because Jesse's parents are on some bullshit and Jesse's on some bullshit. Yep. But they both have these ways of, I think that uh, as far as principle is concerned, his parents kind of have the moral high ground. There's no kind of about it. No, no, no. But like, I think as far as like the relationship between Jesse and his parents, there might be more nuances in there that we don't get to their see. history that we didn't get to see that like, if we knew about that, then like, you know, who's to say that Jesse's parents didn't used to be uh, meth addicts? Straight up. Who did, who was Jesse around that he saw smoking meth that he... Like, nothing about his life makes it seem like that's what... Because there's no way he was in... His parents didn't suddenly become affluent when they had Jacob, like... Right. <laughs> and Jesse thinks he's black. <laughs> so, like, where did this come from? <laughs> now, let's switch to Walt spot. Dude's whipping up some omelets, but Skylar and Junior ain't interested. Skylar, doing her vanishing act again, leaves while Jesse is blowing up Walt's phone like crazy. But Walt ain't about it. He's like, nah, don't even hit me up. Oh, yeah, Walter Jr. is Flynn now. Oh, yeah, Walter Jr. is Flynn now. Out of nowhere. Just because they were like, you know what? We got to do something more with Walt's family. <laughs> what can we do with Walt's family that's interesting? Uh, uh, let's change Let's give him a different name. Yeah. Let's give him a nickname. Let's give him a nickname. He's Flynn. Flynn. He's probably been Flynn for a minute now, though, because the way... Uh, no explanation. The way Lewis kind of comes to the door and says, I'm here for Flynn, he kind of says it to Walt's dad like... Walt should know this kid as Flynn. I think it's only weird for Walt because Walter Jr. is Walter Jr. If his name was like Brian, I don't think he would have given a fuck. Yeah, <laughs> I never liked the name Brian anyway. If Skylar had chosen his name, then she would care. Yeah, right? <laughs> but I thought Skylar Jr. was a great name. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. <laughs> I'd like to move on now. That was gross. I didn't like that. Jesse links with Paul, this old high school buddy who's all domesticated now with a kid. Fallacies, fallacies, fallacies. They're reminiscing about their garage man days, but Paul's wifey walks in, and when Paul tells her Jesse's gonna crash for a while, she's like, nah, Jesse gotta bounce. Immediately. Like, she comes in with the bag, like, can you help me with this uh, in the back? Bro, she comes, when, as soon as she lays eyes on Jesse, <laughs> you think um, that he already has a reputation? Like, does Jesse know her? Do they greet each other? Uh, I don't know if they, like, greet each other all like that. What I if Jesse like just maybe... already has a reputation with, like, the people in his life? 
my theory is that Paul's wife pulled him out of a uh, band, his band life, and that's kind of what locked him in, like locked him down. And it's been a while. It was like Paul has like a what four or five year old. Yeah. It looks like Paul. Three, four year old. So what, what, Paul got this chick pregnant at 18 and cleaned his life up? Maybe. Maybe he was messing around, you know, like. Relatable. Yeah, that, that would be the timeline. Holy shit. Yeah. They're only supposed to be like 23. So they probably, the last time they kicked it was probably while they were in the band together. Yeah, like 18 or 19. Last time they really hung out. And so, like, she probably, like, recognizes him because he's like, you know, do you remember Jesse? So they probably like, started dating. Oh, yeah, I remember Jesse. She, yeah. <laughs> I feel like she changed Paul from the last time Jesse saw him. He was like Jesse. Yeah, probably. Clothes, probably. He seems like it because they seem like they're having a great time. <laughs> yeah. Now he's all khakied up with the polo on. I love the kid when the, when when she takes Paul into the back room to have the conversation. <laughs> that kid is looking at Jesse like, my mom's here now. You done yeah, fucked up. You out of here. Yeah. Yeah, bro. I hope you enjoyed your stay. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. You better start getting your stuff together. <laughs> yeah. You better grab that milk crate of your stuff, man. You, uh, my mom's here and she. Fallacies <laughs> is what you had coming over here. <laughs> Fallacies. <laughs> You are now watching Life, Death, and Dope Boys. Hands up, asshole! No. Morning. It's not just your father, Jesse. I know, I, I, I know, I know, I know, I'm just saying. <laughs> like I really wish that he would have done a double take on the way oh back. Oh my goodness! Like, never no seeing way. you again. <laughs> <laughs> Later at the corner store, Jesse's on a payphone, desperate for a crash pad. After hitting up like a million people and nobody wanting him on their couch, he goes to head off. But it turns out he'd been jacked for his bike and last bit of stuff. Do you think the hobo was in on it? Nah. Come on, man. Hey, man, this guy parks his motorcycle here all the time. I mean. You, you just got a cynical <laughs> outlook on every single one of these side characters. Damn, I'm saying, bro, that's it's possible. He should have, he should have said something. Jesse or hey, uh, guy, <laughs> money guy. <laughs> you don't see Jesse giving money. You just see Jesse dap him up that one time. That could just be their whole relationship. <laughs> he could just be like, hey, dude, how you doing, yo? Uh, good to see you. You're always here. I don't know. You know, maybe, maybe not. Maybe he's really just. It's just how, what, what level of it's none of my business are we? Will, <laughs> is he willing to have? Some people are just really like that. <laughs> none of my business. Yeah, I'm not a part of this. What if he spoke up? Hey, man, you shouldn't steal that motorcycle. And dude was like, "Shut the fuck up, bro! I'll whoop your ass!" And he was like, "That's not cool, man." <laughs> <laughs> Most likely, that was the situation. Hey, shut, shut your old ass up! All right. <laughs> I'm even that old. I just do. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just drink a lot, man. <laughs> Shoot, I'm 45 years old. Just an alcoholic. <laughs> it's aging rapidly. You <laughs> want some Crypt Keeper aging? <laughs> yeah, Crypt Keeper was only like 27 years old. <laughs> it's just that meth, man. <laughs> Gotta stay off it. <laughs> Night falls, and Jesse's at the RV yard where Clovis is holding the fort. Homeboy's climbing fences and he's on the roof of a porta potty, but it caves in, drenching him in straight up nastiness. Mm. Dude's gagging, smelling like a dumpster, so he throws on a gas mask and cries himself to sleep in the RV. Mm. I can imagine sleeping with wet socks on. Wet socks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wet everything. Like your whole outfit is drenched. At least from like here down. Oh man. Ugh. He's not soaking wet, but his socks are wet. And he could have picked his shoe up out of the porta. Jesse looks like the type that wears multiple layers, too. Like, as someone who used to dress like Jesse when I was a kid, <laughs> bro's probably got, like, a second pair of pants on or some yeah. athletic shorts or something. Like, Another hoodie. <laughs> yeah, like, all right, Jesse, you've got at least two shirts on and probably two pairs of pants on. 
Take some of that wet shit off. Like, nah, man. The writers need you to see just how messed up Jesse is getting. Because by the end of the episode, he looks like the homeless dude who let Jesse, Jesse's bike get stolen. Yeah. When when they're in that RV and Walt is all up in his face, Jesse looks like he's been through some shit in the last week. And it's been like a night. It hasn't been a night. It's been since the last time Walt saw him. It's probably been like a week. three days. There's the three days before he got kicked out. And he then, sees him that night. The next day, he meets with his parents. Three, three days. days later, he gets kicked out. Three days. That's and, like, day. I'm only assuming that. All but it's weird. Same day, it's but yeah. weird that the very next Jesse scene is him getting kicked out. It's like, damn, that's been three days already. Yeah. That's, that's how long Walt's been going through this cold shoulder stuff, too. Well, he deserves that. I guess Jesse deserves it, too. Everybody deserves it. They're just the main characters. So yeah. it's like, oh, man, poor Walt and Jesse. Poor Skylar and the Pinkmans. <laughs> I don't feel sorry for the Pinkmans, bro. <laughs> You, that's that's a hard tree to climb up. I don't think I'll ever feel sorry for them dudes. But Jesse, I feel for him. I, I feel for him. And I've like I've never been that low. Like I've never been homeless. And he's just asking for a break from. So he just needs a break from, from anybody. Somebody. His family doesn't have him. His fucking homeboys. Yeah, Walt. Nobody. Nobody's got him. That's like the whole series, though, except for like one or two people. Mike. It's just Mike. Yep. Mike Armin Trauma now, however you say his last name. <laughs> Herman Trogan. He a real one. <laughs> Skylar's on her vanishing act again, ghosting out the crib. Walt goes to Flynn like, all right, let's have some fun, and takes him for a spin in his smooth 2004 Pontiac <laughs> ass <tech. laughs> Walt's idea of a good time. Hey, I'm 80 and 16. That is pretty dope. <laughs> Go driving? Yeah, it's pretty fun. I mean, if you've never done it before. As far as he knows, he hasn't. This thing winds up being real stressful. I still, I don't blame Walter, though. I don't blame Walter. He should have took him to laser tag or something, bro. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? How? How's my G gonna laser tag? You use Walter as a human shield or something. <laughs> I don't think, I can't even, because I don't want to make fun of Walter Jr., but, like, my homie can't even hold the gun and, like, Walk well, at the same time. My bad. Yeah, that was. I'm sorry. I was very. Look, I was very inconsiderate. <laughs> My bad. I don't. I think this. I don't know. Maybe yeah. Walter could have been a more taking him to a movie like for lunch. Maybe Walter could have been a more flexible breakfast. parent. Said, Where's breakfast? Kid is hungry. Yeah, go to Waffle House. Yeah, take that man to uh, a pizza place or something. I don't know. Take him to a strip club. He's already had that weird experience with his uncle <laughs> Hank. Might as well have a weird experience yeah, with you traumatize him again. And traumatize some poor young girl. <laughs> but this lesson goes south real quick, because Walt's all uptight about Junior using both feet on the pedals, which he needs because of his disability. I think Walter tries to be patient. <laughs> he doesn't try hard enough. I know, because he, he explains, nothing's wrong with your legs, you can do this. And then he very calmly, all right, we're going to go down here, all right, start breaking. Prepare to the amount of times he's he had prepare to bake, Walter Jr., come on, bro. <laughs> he slams on the gas right quick. Come on. Just I know it's hard, but just move your foot. At first it feels like three a inches. Tantrum. It is. It's a temper tantrum. <laughs> is it? Yes. Because yes. he's like, I told you. Yeah. It's a temper tantrum. <laughs> like the second you found out you couldn't use your feet, you fucked this up. Like the second you, the literally the moment you were told not to use both of your feet, it was like I'll show him. You just forgot how to drive completely, <laughs> and it is a temper. You hit the cone and then go. See, I told you. <laughs> fuck you, Walter Junior. Flynn, get the that, fuck out of my car. Isn't that cone clear? It was like twenty feet. Now switch it up to the repair yard. Clovis follows this trail of blue gunk footprints from the busted toilet to the RV. Jesse wakes up to Clovis racking a shotgun and pointing it at him. Jesse's got no cash for the tow and fix, and Clovis is all like, pay up or I'm cashing in on these goods up in here. Have you ever met anyone named Clovis? <laughs> no. But, hey. I mean, I've never met anybody else named Kareem either. <laughs> <laughs> At least you know it's a real name. Yeah, you right. I've heard of other Kareem. You right. I ain't never heard of no Clovis. I have never heard of a Clovis myself either, no. Ah, oh, yes, that's Clovis Jackson over there. <laughs> hey. Maybe he's a junior too or something. I don't <laughs> Maybe. know. Maybe. He's got one, some of the, like a really old fashioned name. Yeah, my name is Clovis the Sixth. It's like, my, my parents won't give up on this, but this is ending now. My God. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'd go by my middle name or something. You ain't just gonna be calling me Clovis. How do you? That even, is his middle name, and his first name is worse. How do you abbreviate it? Like, how do you make it a nickname or anything? My nigga Clove. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> could be spicy. I don't know. Yeah, like he, like the seasoning. <laughs> <laughs> you mean like the like, like the, the spice, like the flour? <laughs> yeah, yeah. My name Clovis. Yeah, that's my dude Clovis, man. We go way. We back. call him Clove. <laughs> like the cigarettes. <laughs> Dejarums? <laughs> All right, I'm going by another thing. <laughs> We're just going to call that man Dejarum. <laughs> Why you call him that? Because his name is Clovis. <laughs> There's levels to this. <laughs> Clovis like clove? Dejarums are clove cigarettes? <laughs> Takes all the fun out of it if I have to explain it. <laughs> Dude's ready to hawk the RV's gear, and he kicks Jesse to the curb. Jesse's trying to hustle it, offers two grand in 48 hours. <laughs> Okay. Offering money he don't got. Look at him though. <laughs> Look like another one of those devil advocate sort of deals. From Clovis's perspective, this motherfucker has already promised you money that he could not pay up, and now he has broken into your property. <laughs> he's, he's, he's standing homeless. here covered in shit and piss. He's blue. I'll give him two thousand dollars in two days. <laughs> Come on, baby. Just, just let me just hold on to it for a little longer. It's like, dude. $2,000 in two days, bro. Get the fuck out of here. That sounds like some shit a drug addict would say. Like, get out <laughs> before please, I shoot you. Please get off of my property. <laughs> I'm going to have to take you out the game for real. But while Clovis is yapping on the phone, cooking up a deal, Jesse sneaks back in and straight up steals the RV, smashing through the locked gate. I wouldn't have been comfortable walking back into my house like that i would have had to watch jesse leave yeah i'd have kept an eye on him he just completely dismissed him like all right and also what is he is he on like a landline yeah it's a, it's a different time yeah because yeah you can call the dude from the trailer if you had a cell phone you're like yeah i'm Bro, looking if, at because he took the note if you took, writing, if you took this episode right now uh-huh all right walter and jesse don't have cell phones if you took this episode and put it in today's time how what do they do what do they do They'd have to find some other stuff out. They don't use nothing but landlines and payphones this whole episode. How do they communicate today? Otherwise, yeah. <laughs> like send text messages. Like they they might be fucked. Payphones don't exist anymore, and I, I haven't seen a landline <laughs> in a long time. Nah. Nah, man. Maybe at a business. My grandma house? Like, I understand Clovis having a landline. Yes. From, from his place of business, but like... Nah, yo, yo, aunt's house, Walter's house, like, people would just be calling cell phones. Don't nobody got no landlines no more. At the white crib, Walt's doing some apologizing to Skylar for all the drama, right? Dude's trying to convince her he ain't cheating or nothing. Skylar's straight up like, give me something that's not a total load of shiggity. Walt's playing clueless, saying he doesn't know what she wants to hear. So, yup, Skylar's out of there. Walter's getting a taste of his own medicine. For Skylar's well within her right. She's He's, right. She's right. Tell me something that isn't bullshit, but it's like Walter is still operating under the fact that maybe Hank was wrong. Hank must have been mistaken when it's like there is literally no way in hell that Hank is mistaken. You don't understand. Right. It's like, does he really think that she because he probably does think that she thinks he's cheating or something like that's why he has a second cell phone. But when Skylar asked because they were in the, you know, in the room when Marie brought up the second cell phone and Skylar said. Hank, what is this like? What does this mean? And Hank didn't say it means he's cheating. He said, it means Walt has a secret. Yeah. So her mind isn't like, all right, I think she's cheat. I think he's cheating and that he's hiding it from me. Her mind is like, he has a secret. What is the secret? What is the secret? And Whatever it is. The first thing that she checks off, like, because an affair comes up in that conversation. And Marie is like, bullshit. Walt, please. There's no way. Not Walt. I think and then that Skylar probably follows up on that one immediately. Like after Hank and Marie leave, she investigates. <laughs> Start, think, at least starts her investigation. I don't think that she puts an affair past him. I think that she hasn't drawn a conclusion. I think she's leaving it open. She knows whatever whatever he's gonna tell me, whatever the secret is, is something that I'm not gonna like. So she's waiting to hear something that she's not gonna like. What if at this point she has already called Gretchen to confront her about her having an affair with Walter? No, nah, she hasn't. I think that because Skylar is taking a very passive-aggressive approach. She's still not being confrontational because 
Otherwise, she would have pulled up on Walt like, yo, like, I know you're hiding something. I don't know what it is, but tell me that now. And I'm not fucking with you until you tell me what your secret is. Like, not like, oh, yo, I think you're cheating. It's too conclusive. She's leaving it open. Like, whatever he's going to tell me, I'm not going to like it. So won't you tell me? And because he's not, he's got an excuse for everything. He's trying to butter it up and make it seem like everything's okay. She's like, no, nah, I'm not going to be, we not going to be cool until I hear something I don't like. Like that's her whole attitude. It makes you wonder, like maybe Walter was just a very open and transparent spouse before this because his lies are bad and they leave room for way too many questions mm-hmm. and yeah he's just a really even the few really lie is really like, bad lie none of our doctors believe you yeah yeah dr del cavoli is a premier cancer doctor and, and he's, he's never heard skeptical. of this yeah hmm. <laughs> like she he's lucky that everybody is just letting that one go <laughs> <laughs> Because bullshit. <laughs> We're talking about suspension of disbelief. Like, no one would yeah, just... Everybody like, around him is like, all right, you're the main character, so I guess... I guess I you have cancer. That, but. but Dr. Del Cavoli's reaction to his story would have been enough to be like, yo, all right, <laughs> what's going on? Hank thinks you're lying. Dr. Del Cavoli thinks you're lying. Please. These are all the experts we need. You're lying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, come on. <laughs> Alright, so uh, Walt and Jesse are about to scrap again But before we get to that, like the video mm, please. What, what are you doing? If you're still here, you like the video Yeah If you haven't hit that like button yet uh, I'm mad at you and, and we won't be cool again Until until you hit the like it's button It's true, and quite frankly, uh, the subscribe It's it's right there It's well. right there next to it <laughs> It's so right next to it Why not just <laughs> Man Every, I, I appreciate everybody's support. If you've already subscribed, thank you very much. If you've uh, watched this much of our it. videos, yeah, for sure. Like you know, just getting are, here, this is a checkpoint. Yeah, y'all are dope for real. But <laughs> like the video, man. Subscribe. What are you? What are you doing? Just, just do it. Walt's tailing Skylar to the driveway, and she's peeling off in her ride. Then he peeps the RV posted up on the street. So Buddy goes in there all hot. He's already pissed. <laughs> he is already He just livid. got through arguing with his wife. He's already mad. <laughs> He's about to take his whole week out <laughs> on Jesse Pinkman. He's like ready for it. Like <laughs> This is just what I mean. I'm about to beat this motherfucker's ass. <laughs> Verbally. Perfect. This is the perfect. Yes. <laughs> I needed a punching bag right quick. <laughs> uh, he walks up on Jesse and calls him a pathetic junkie. Jesse's out of patience, and he shoves Walt against the wall. And they're scrapping for a sec, but Jesse's got the upper hand ready to lay the smack down. But when Walt dares him to go ahead with the ground and pound, Jesse backs down. Well, we posed the question, when, when, if you were Jesse, would you have stopped fucking with Walt? And it's like, man, I think this belittling, this interaction would have been, if anything, man. Jesus. Yeah, at least hear him out. At least hear him out. Because you, you didn't even let him explain yeah. himself. He apologized for being there. First thing he said, and then he never got to his reasons why. He tried to. Like, he tried to say, because he said, like, my parents, they doing the most. Like, you know, I can't find, like, listen, I just need my money. Half, let me get the money, and then I'm out of here, I swear. And that's when Walter kind of goes off, because he's like, yo, there's not no half of my money. There's all of my money. Now, back inside the house, Walt decides to politic with Jesse. He breaks Jesse nearly half of his bread and stashes the rest. Meanwhile, Skylar's posted up at the store about to light up a cig, even though she's pregnant. She's getting some mad side eye from this lady in the next car, but then Skylar's like, Psh, whatever lady, I'ma do me. Mm-hmm. So she sparks that cig and takes a moment to chill, and that's the F. Do you think that she is an ex-smoker? Yes. Yeah? Absolutely. She didn't just decide. Yeah, at 40 years old to start smoking pregnant. cigarettes. Pregnant. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, she was a former smoker. Yeah, man. She either quit smoking when she got pregnant or... Yeah, I don't know. She was probably a smoker before she got pregnant. I really... She probably quit smoking because she got pregnant. You think so? Yes. Yeah, you know, that could be it. Yes. That could be it. I don't know. I, we'd like your opinions on that. Like, I think, What do you think is... is... I think that's it. It's, nobody just decides... Nobody does that. Other she than, like, teenagers. You know, she could have smoked a long time ago because, like, you still get urges and cravings, like, years after you, you, like, had your last cigarette. They're just not as powerful. 
but this yeah, situation but, is so anxiety inducing, I think, that it it kind of like buckles her as far as her resolve is concerned. I don't know. It could be a, know, it could be man. a lot of things. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't think it's been that long. She went out. She w- was resolute in going to get a whole ass pack of cigarettes. I don't know. I think that she's. I think that she only quit smoking because she was pregnant. I think that she was a smoker just prior to this. Hmm. But I don't know because then with that. The, I just have to go back and watch what episode one well, or two again because but then at they, the same time it wouldn't it wouldn't be so surprising that Walt, Walt has lung cancer. cancer yeah. because they're trying to get to the bottom of it. Yeah, if Skylar had been smoking this whole time, then they would be like, you know, it could be secondhand smoke, that and that comes him. that comes up. But still, it makes it doesn't make sense otherwise. Nah. So that's the episode. Woo! What do you think uh, about the episode? There's a lot of family backlash in this with both characters. Their families are well within their rights. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of get to see like a lot of that fallout happen. Yeah. Like a lot of that, those results, the side effects that show you that it's not Jesse and Walt aren't isolated characters in this. There are people around them who these things affect. Yeah. And we're getting to see that now. It's definitely a, a sympathy for the devil type of thing. Yeah. They're because- both huge bastards, and <laughs> all of the ops in this episode for both of them are well within their right. Yeah, this is like this is like all the stuff that essentially you were rooting for them about in the first season. This is like the result of that. Yes. So anyway, thank you all for watching. Thanks for checking out this episode of Life, Death, and Dope Boys. Mm. We appreciate each and every one of you. Rest in peace, Wes. Thank you.